In this lesson, we'll take a look at sums and differences of functions. And in the first example, we're asked to find uh, the sum of a couple function and graph that sum function. In example A, f of x is x squared and g of x is 2. And we're looking at the graph in the uh, top right-hand side of the page. And g of x equals 2 is just a constant function. I could call it y equals 2. Every y coordinate on that function is 2 f of x equals x squared is this parabola. I have graphed seven points here. They all come from just squaring a certain x value to get uh, the particular y coordinate of each. So for example, that points in the graph because uh, the x coordinate is negative 3. And if you put negative 3 in here and square it, you get positive 9. So negative 3, 9 is on the graph. This is the point 2, 4 because the x coordinate is 2. And if you put 2 in here and square it, you get 4. 2 squared is 4. So 2, 4 is a point in the graph. Now we're going to add these two functions, f of x equals x squared and g of x equals 2 together. And we'll call it h of x. So h of x is the sum of f of x and g of x. And so we're just algebraically adding x squared and 2. So h of x is x squared plus 2. Those are unlike terms, so that's as much as we can simplify that function. Now, what you do graphically to add these is you add the corresponding y coordinates. So for each x value that you're going to graph this in the graph, so I'm going to start at negative 3 here, although I could go to the left, but I'd be too high up here. At negative 3, the y coordinates of two functions are 2 and 9. And so I'm, I'm trying now to find the point who's on h of x has an x coordinate of negative 3, and then I want to find what its y coordinate would be. So at negative 3, I'm adding 2 and, and 9, and of course that adds to 11. So the point negative 3, 11 would be on my h of x function. At negative 2, the y coordinates are 2 and 4, and of course 2 and 4 add to 6. So the point negative 2, 6 would be on the h of x function. At negative 1, the y coordinates are 1 and 2, and 1 and 2 add to 3. So that point negative 1, 3 is on the h of x function. At 0, an x coordinate of 0, we're adding y coordinates of 0 and 2, and of course 0 and 2 add to 2. At 1, the y coordinates are 1 and 2, which of course add to 3. At 2, the y coordinates are 2 and 4, which add to 6 again. And at 3, there are 2 and 9, which add to 11 one more time. And then we draw a smooth curve between all of those. And so that's what h of x equals x squared plus 2 would look like. Now, if you think of the original function, the g of x function, it extends forever to the right and left, and so does the original x squared function. It does keep on going to the right and up and left and up as well. So the domain for both of these is the entire set of real numbers. So the domain for the new function is still the entire set of real numbers. There's, there's no value I cannot put in place of x and square it and add 2 that makes it undefined. So the domain is the entire set of real numbers for this new h of x parabola. Now, there is a restriction on the range, though. For example, the original function has a restriction on its range, so the new function should also have a restriction on its range. And actually, the uh, original g of x function has a very small restriction on its range because y is only equal to 2 there. Now, the original range for f of x would be y is greater than, zero, greater than or equal to 0. 0 is the lowest y value, and of course, all other y values are bigger than 0. For the h of x function, the lowest y value is 2. All other y values are bigger than 2. So the range of our new function is the entire set of real numbers greater than or equal to 2. In example b here, the functions we're adding are x squared and 3x, f of x and qx, q of x. And so we'll call this some function p of x. And so we'll add x squared and 3x. And so p of x is x squared plus 3x. Now, if I were subtracting these functions, uh, you do it exactly the same way. If p of x was supposed to be f of x minus q of x, then it would just be x squared minus 3x. Now, in order to graph these, again, uh, for each x coordinate you want to graph them for, you just add the two corresponding y coordinates of the original two functions. So, for example, I'll start at negative 3 here again. Um, the y coordinate there is 9. You can't quite see the y coordinate down here for the g of x function, but if you put negative 3 in place of x, 3 times negative 3 is negative 9. So the negative 9 y coordinate down here added to the positive 9 y coordinate up here. Those are just opposites, and of course they will add to 0. So at negative 3, the y coordinate for this would be 0. At negative 2, the y coordinates are 4 and negative 6. So 4 and negative 6 add to negative 2. So y coordinate is negative 2 there. 
At negative 1, the y-coordinates are one, positive 1 and negative 3. 1 and negative 3 add to negative 2, once again. Uh, here, both y-coordinates are 0, so 0 and 0, of course, add to 0. Where x is 1, the y-coordinates are 1 and 3, so 1 and 3 add to 4. And where x is 2, the y-coordinates are 4 and 6, which, of course, add to 10. And so if you join these together, you get a nice smooth curve. It's still a parabola. You should recognize that if x squared is a parabola, x squared plus 3x is still a parabola. And we're actually, you might be wondering, well, how did I do this part up here? You can actually extend further out here. I'm actually going to show where one of these points come from, where uh, uh, the x coordinates are uh, negative 4, uh, a little later on here. Now, in order to state the range and domain for this function, I need to find, well, specifically for the range, how far down exactly that y coordinate is, because it's not exact like positive 2 here. It's something a little bit below negative 2. And so what I can do is find the vertex of that new function. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to factor x squared plus 3x. There's a common factor of x, so I'll factor an x out and get x times x plus 3. And so if you set each of these factors to 0, you get if x is set equal to 0, you get a 0 at 0. And if you set x plus 3 to 0, you get a, a, a 0 at negative 3 because negative 3 plus 3 makes a value of 0. See, I'm actually thinking if p of x is 0, if y is 0, then that's how I find what the x-intercepts are. So setting this factor to 0, I get negative 3, which is uh, that 0 right there. So the two zeros, or x-intercepts for the function, are at 0 and negative 3. Now, the vertex would be exactly in the middle between those two because of the fact that parabolas are symmetrical. So the x-coordinate of the vertex would be at negative 1.5 or negative 3 halves. And so if I take my function and substitute negative 3 halves in place of x, that will evaluate to give me the y-coordinate of my vertex. The x-coordinate of the vertex is negative 3 halves. But I need the y-value to figure out what the, exactly the range is going to be. So if you square negative 3 halves, you get negative 3 squared is 9, and 2 squared is 4. 3 times negative 3 is minus 18, so we get minus 18 over Actually, we get negative 9 over 2, sorry. I've actually got a common denominator here. What I did was multiply those to give negative 9 halves. And then I multiplied by 2 top and bottom because I recognize that there's a denominator of 4 here, so I need a common denominator. So this gives me the 4 right here. And uh, negative 9 times 2 is, of course, the negative 18. So I have a common denominator, and then 9 quarters minus 18 quarters, of course, is minus 9 quarters. So that's the y-coordinate for my vertex. So the vertex here would be at negative 3 halves, that's the x-coordinate, and negative 9 quarters is the y-coordinate. Now, this is a parabola. It goes forever to the right, forever to the left. Same as the original two functions. They extend to the right and left forever, so their domains are the entire set of real numbers. So so will, me, so will be my new parabola's domain. The restriction on the range is y is the set of the entire real numbers, except y would have to be greater than or equal to negative 9 quarters. That's the lowest y value. All other y values are larger than that. Now, one note about if we refine the difference of these two functions, when I went to graph it, the only other thing I would do differently is I would be subtracting the y-coordinates in whatever order this said. So if it said f of x minus q of x, you would take f's y-values and subtract q's from them. If it said q of x minus f of x, you would take q's first and then subtract f's from them. Now, I said I was going to find one more point over here. For example, uh, if we found the, the point where the x-coordinate's negative 4, so I would find, I'm finding p of negative 4 here. So I'm substituting negative 4 into the function. So negative 4 squared plus 3 times negative 4. And that's 16. Take away 12, which of course is 4. And so that would tell me that the point negative 4, 4 is a point on the graph. So that's how you could find additional points.